A hundred years ago, less than 2% of the population in the US slept six hours or less a night. Now, more than 65% of the US adult population fail to obtain the recommended seven to nine hours of sleep each night during the week. Many of these individuals do not report wanting or needing less sleep, which is crazy. So how do you get a good night's sleep? It starts with understanding why we sleep by Matthew Walker. He's done 20 years of sleep research, been on the Joe Rogan show, and has been a sleep consultant for massive organizations like Pixar and the NBA. So let's learn why sleep is more important than you think. Amazing breakthrough. Scientists have discovered a revolutionary new treatment that makes you live longer. It enhances your memory and makes you more creative. It makes you look more attractive. It keeps you slim, lowers food cravings. It protects you from cancer and dementia. It wards off colds and flu. It lowers your risk of heart attacks and stroke, not to mention diabetes. You'll even feel happier, less depressed, and less anxious. It also does these things. Are you interested? The evidence supporting these claims has been documented by 17,000 well-scrutinized scientific reports to date. Every major organ in your body is enhanced by sleep. Pause this video to see all the great things a good night's sleep does for you. Here's seven sleep facts. Number one, not sleeping more than six to seven hours a night damages your immune system and doubles your cancer risk. Number two, getting less than six to eight hours of sleep shortens the time to physical exhaustion by 10 to 30% and your aerobic output is significantly reduced. Number three, getting less than five hours of sleep increases your risk of a car crash by 300%. Less than four hours and it shoots up to a whopping 1,000 150%. Number four, no scientific evidence shows that a device, drug, or any amount of psychological willpower can compensate for a crappy sleep. Number five, you do not know how sleep deprived you are when you are sleep deprived. One way to know how sleep deprived you are is to measure your sleep debt. It's a running total of the hours of sleep you've missed relative to your sleep need. So if your sleep need is eight hours per night and you only slept seven hours last night, then you have accumulated one hour of sleep debt. Sleep debt is similar to financial debt, but the difference is that you can't bank sleep. So for example, you can't sleep 14 hours tonight and then two hours tomorrow night and expect to feel great. Meeting your sleep need consistently every night is the only way to stay out of debt. After 10 consecutive nights of getting seven hours of sleep, one hour less than the recommended eight, your brain becomes as impaired as it would if you hadn't slept for a full 24 hours. You can track your sleep debt and predict your energy levels using an app called Rise, which you are unable to do on many other sleep apps. It can track your bedtime and wake up times, or you can import them from third-party apps and wearables you might already be using. You can record how you feel each day so you can see how sleep debt affects you. You can also set reminders to avoid late night meals and when to work out so you can achieve a higher quality sleep. The feature of the Rise app many get most excited about is the daily energy schedule Rise predicts from your sleep times and other factors, like light exposure. The energy schedule reveals when you have your two daily peaks in energy, which is when you should schedule your most challenging tasks of the day, your daily energy dip, a great time for a nap or for checking emails, and when you should wind your body down for bed. It even reveals your ideal bedtime based on when your body is producing its highest concentration of the sleep hormone melatonin. Use the link at the top of the description below to get the 40% discount on an annual subscription to Rice. All annual memberships come with a free seven day trial. Number six, a study showed that the amygdala had a 60% boost in emotional reactivity on sleep deprived participants. And number seven, 85% of Walker's students pull all nighters before exams. Walker's study showed that sleep-deprived students have a 40% reduction in the ability to cram new facts into their brains. It can mean the difference between slaying an exam and getting a smack from your parents for failing. Now let's talk about sleep and creativity. One of the biggest benefits of sleep is the creative gains. A study was conducted with two groups. The first group didn't get a full night of sleep, but the other did. The group who slept well saw a 300% boost in creative solution insight. They were capable of discovering a mystery rule without spending more time thinking about it. According to the internet, Thomas Edison, Salvador Dali, and Albert Einstein would sit in chairs, place a plate on the ground, and hold objects in their hand until they fell asleep. At the point just before sleep, they would drop the object, the plate would clang, 
and their brains would be filled with creative insight. Let's move on to lesson two, why do we sleep? The short answer is, we don't know. But we do know that there isn't one major organ that isn't enhanced by sleep. Walker theorizes that sleep is our default state and that wakefulness emerged from sleep. So why did we bother to even wake up? You might say it's to recharge, but going back to the original theory, we wouldn't have to recharge in the first place if we never woke up. Weird. So what makes sleep unique in humans? Well, primates sleep 10 to 15 hours, whereas we sleep about five to nine hours. Also, we get a whopping 20 to 25% of REM sleep as opposed to just 9% in primates. Walker says REM sleep is what stands between rationality and insanity. In a study, rats died nearly as fast from selective REM deprivation as they did following total sleep deprivation. REM is not necessarily any more important than other stages of sleep, but it is necessary for optimizing memory, creativity, and a plethora of other functions. Primates sleep in trees. Walker suggests that Homo erectus, the Homo before Homo sapiens, were the first ground sleepers because their short arms and upright stance would have made it difficult to set up camp in trees. In Walker's own words, an evolutionary pressure to become qualitatively more efficient in how we sleep therefore developed. Any Homo erectus capable of accomplishing more efficient sleep would likely have been favored in survival and selection. Evolution saw to it that our ancient form of sleep became somewhat shorter in duration, yet increased in intensity, especially by enriching the amount of REM sleep we packed into the night. Lesson three, 12 things that stop you from sleeping. Late exercise, caffeine and nicotine, alcohol before bed, large meals and drinks late at night, sleep distracting medicines, naps after 3 p.m., not relaxing before bed, not taking a hot bath before bed, too much artificial light, heat, and technology in your room, not getting 30 minutes of sunlight exposure each day, lying in bed awake, and enforced awakening due to societal pressures and alarm clocks. Stick around until the end of the video to hear the number one sleep tip that's more important than the ones I just listed. But first, let's learn how much sleep you need. The short answer is seven to nine hours of sleep opportunity. That means the window of time you allow yourself for sleep, not the amount of time slept. Many people in the modern world give themselves a five to 6.5 hour sleep opportunity. Here's some more points to consider. Healthier people may need less sleep, according to biohacker Dave Asprey. Sleeping more than nine hours causes an upward risk in infection and pneumonia. Some Indian yogis are known to only sleep two to four hours a night. A sleep meditation exists which can apparently train you to do this. There's also Japanese Zenists who walk 80 kilometers or more for 100 days straight every day, sometimes 200 days, with barely any sleep, transcending the limits of what Western people believe is possible. And lastly, at Mantak Chia's darkness retreats in Thailand, he says after a couple weeks, one may need only a few hours of sleep each night, and that sleep is often in continuous consciousness. This doesn't mean it's wise to ignore Walker's suggestion, given that you're probably a modern westerner watching this, doing modern westernly things like staring at a screen for six hours a day, and being unnaturally stressed by the socially engineered demands of your ego-driven boss, etc. Now for a quick fun fact. The case of Yiyang Shioshan. He spent 11 days straight to watch the 2012 European Soccer Championships while working his job each day. He was found dead in his apartment by his mother. Lesson five, why sleeping pills suck. Almost 10 million Americans swallowed a sleeping aid last month. In 2018, it was reported by the very reliable New York Times that the 120 hour workweek savage Elon Musk took Ambien to help him sleep. It took Ambien just 24 months to amass 4 billion in sales profit, not including the black market. This was versus Star Wars movies that took 40 years to amass just 3 billion. No past or current sleeping medications on the market induce natural sleep. Old pills like diazepam would sedate instead of aiding sleep. A popular modern pill like Zolpidem, which is sold under the brand name Ambien, lacks the induction of the deepest brain waves. Crappy side effects include daytime forgetfulness, unconscious actions at night, and delayed reaction times which can affect things like driving and next day grogginess. Next day grogginess can lead people to swig a coffee or three, 
which leads to crap sleep, which can lead to swinging more coffee, which can lead to crap sleep. You get the picture. Rebound insomnia can also happen. When you go off the medication, you end up with poorer sleep than when you started. Now there's a Swiss army knife of horrible things to say about Ambien, but I'll save your time by showing you this meme instead. Walker is not anti-medication, we just need something that is effective. Moving on to lesson six, your best friend, insomnia. According to Walker, sleep deprivation is having the adequate ability to sleep, yet giving oneself an inadequate opportunity to sleep. But insomnia is suffering from an inadequate ability to generate sleep, despite allowing oneself the adequate opportunity to get sleep. One in nine people have insomnia, which is more than 40 million Americans. The two most common triggers of chronic insomnia are psychological, emotional concerns or worry, and anxiety or emotional distress. A major cause of psychological distress is an overactive sympathetic nervous system, which you may know as the fight or flight response. From an evolutionary perspective, it turns on to keep you alert and protect you from danger, but it's harmful and will keep you awake if it's active for too long. Let's learn about the natural insomnia cure without drugs. The most effective way to treat insomnia without drugs is CBTI, which means Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia. Walker mentions nine major CBTI methods for insomniacs. Lesson seven, exercise and diet's relation to sleep. There's decent evidence to suggest that regular exercise fosters better sleep and better sleep fosters better exercise. But don't exercise two to three hours before bed because it raises your core body temperature which will make it difficult to fall asleep. And what about diet and sleep? Well, research is limited. The main point that Walker makes is that scientific evidence suggests that you shouldn't go to bed too hungry or too full, and avoid diets that consist of 70% carbs or more. One more lesson, then stick around until the very end of the video, because I'll share with you Walker's number one sleep tip from the whole book. Walker says this tip is perhaps the single most effective way of helping improve your sleep even though it involves the use of an alarm clock. Lesson eight, a new vision for sleep from the individual level to the societal level. Walker has a vision for changing sleep for the individual, educational institutions, organizations, and ultimately society. So for the individual, his two tips are, number one, track your sleep. You can use an app like Rise, an Aura Ring, or the Dream Band. Number two, Avoid blue dominant electric light by installing sleep friendly bulbs in your home and turn on night shift mode on your phone in the evening. If you're a leader or executive, check out the written summary on our website by tapping the link in the description below. Let's recap. In today's video, you learn that sleep is more important than you think, seven sleep facts, good sleep significantly boosts creativity, nobody knows why we sleep, what makes sleep unique in humans is total sleep time and high amounts of REM compared to animals, 12 things that stop you from sleep include late exercise, caffeine and nicotine, alcohol before bed, large meals and drinks late at night, sleep destructing medicines, naps after 3 p.m., not relaxing before bed, not taking a hot bath before bed, too much artificial light, heat and technology in your room, not getting 30 minutes of sunlight exposure each day, lying in bed awake, and enforced awakening due to societal pressures and alarm clocks. You need a seven to nine hour sleep opportunity, sleeping pills are ineffective, CBTI is drug-free and more effective. One in nine people suffer from insomnia. Don't exercise two to three hours before bed and avoid diets that consist of 70% carbs or more. Don't go to bed too full or too hungry and two ways to improve your sleep are to track it and avoid electric light. And lastly, the number one sleep tip from the whole book. It's boring and you've probably heard it before, but it's verified by Walker the Sleep Master. Here it is. Go to bed and wake up at the same time each day, no matter what. 